Welcome geniuses, I'm Genie, your best buddy for A-Levels. In this channel, we'll bring you to explore the secret formula behind success. So they realized that the only uh, factor that affects the maximum energy of the photoelectrons is the frequency. So you're actually pl plotting versus frequency. So the higher the frequency of EM radiation, the higher your maximum Ke. But provided you start from the threshold. La. So at the threshold frequency, it will start to emit electrons. Below the threshold frequency, got nothing. Man. Understand? La? But above the threshold frequency, the higher your frequency, the higher your maximum Ke. So why? So that was the one puzzling scientist, because this is a fourth observation now. Because you see, if you supply more energy to the electrons by using higher intensity, no difference to the maximum Ke. But if you supply more energy to electrons by using higher frequency of EM radiation, you get higher Ke. So why it depends on frequency and not intensity? Because both we are supplying more energy. Right? So therefore, this is, these are your four observations that show that EM radiation do not behave as waves. Number one, the instantaneous emission of electrons. Number two, there's the existence of threshold frequency. The definition is here. And then you have why the maximum Ke is independent of intensity of EM radiation and maximum Ke only increases with frequency of EM radiation. So this was one of the phenomena that challenged scientists' idea of EM radiation. All the while, they thought they were with EM radiation waves. But this phenomena of photoelectric emission shows you that EM radiation may not behave as waves. So who managed to explain photoelectric emission? Einstein. Okay. So how did Einstein manage to explain the phenomenon of photoelectric emission? He actually borrowed an idea from Max Planck. So Max Planck was the first scientist of that era who suggested that EM radiation are not waves. He suggested that EM radiation, they are particles. So what kind of particles did he say that EM radiation uh, uh, is or are? They said, he said that they are actually packets of energy called photons. So instead of imagining the, the EM radiation coming to you as waves, you can actually consider them as packets of energy. And according to uh, Max Planck, each packet of energy which is called a photon, its energy is given by this equation. E equals to HF, which is H is Planck's constant. F is the frequency of EM radiation. So the E gives you the energy of each photon. If you want to convert F to wavelength, also can. Remember the formula V equals to F lambda? So your F equals to V over lambda. So your F here, you can change to C over lambda. Why C? Because all EM radiation travel with the same speed, which is speed of light and vacuum. So C is the speed of light and vacuum. So you can either use E equals HF or E equals HC over lambda. That is your third equation, which is the energy of H photon. Then what Max Planck did was, he left it there. Then Einstein saw this uh, idea and he decided to use this idea to explain photoelectric emission. So this is how Einstein explained it. He says that, <coughs> number one, uh, he said the assumption is this. Every, <coughs> every photon can only interact with one electron at a single time. So let's say <coughs> this is your photon. It can only interact with one electron at any single time. Okay? You cannot have multiple photons absorbed by the electron. At one time, only one photon is absorbed by the electron. If the energy contained by the photon is sufficient for the electrons to escape, it will escape. But if the, el the energy co contained by the photon is not enough for the, for, uh, for the electron to escape, it will not escape, the, uh, it will, it will, uh, the energy will be used up before a second photon can be absorbed. So you cannot say, oh, first photon not enough, so absorb a second photon, not enough, absorb the one, finally come out, no. Because Einstein says only one photon interacts with one electron. If enough for it to come out, it comes out. 
not enough to come out, the energy is used up before a second photon is absorbed. Because why? It happens so fast. Before the second photon can be absorbed, energy is used up. How maybe uh, either it just moves faster a bit, uh, or there's another idea which says that the photon won't, won't even be absorbed because it doesn't match, so it refuses to absorb. Okay, so that's the idea behind the photoelectric emission. But if it's, if it's enough energy to absorb, it will come out. So that explains why there's a, a instantaneous emission of electrons. There's no accumulation of energy. Right? One photon absorbed by electron, enough come out straight away. No need to wait. So you explain instantaneous emission. And number two, you also manage to explain threshold frequency because the energy of each photon, remember, depends on the frequency. So if you have a minimum energy here, that means you need a minimum frequency here. So what will happen is, if you supply a lower frequency EM radiation, let's say you supply red light. So the frequency is lower, the energy of each photon is lower. So what happens is either it absorbs but it doesn't do anything or it just passes through, it refuses to absorb. So even if you send more, it doesn't matter. So you increase the, the, the intensity uh, of EM radiation of red light, for example, for zinc, nothing happens. No matter how long you wait, not a single electron will come out. That's what happened. Uh? Because if you use zinc and you use lower than ultraviolet, no matter how intense the, the, let's say, the red light, no matter how long you shine, not a single electron comes out. Because the energy contained is not enough. So you cannot keep on accumulating. It's only one electron and one photon. If you have enough, it comes out. Not enough, nothing happens. That's it. Third observation, right? Remember we said the maximum Ke is uh, independent of intensity of EM radiation. Now, let's say you use ultraviolet so it can come out and we increase the intensity of ultraviolet. What you are basically doing, you are increasing the number of photons. You are not increasing the energy of each photon. Why? Huh? I'll show you the formula. So since intensity is energy per unit time per unit area, right? Remember in your AS, intensity of EM radiation, which is power per unit area, remember? So the energy is actually number of photons times the energy of each photon. That's what you're saying. Because the energy of the EM radiation, all right, which is uh, this one, is given by the photons. Ma. So you got number of photons times the energy of each photon gives you the total energy of the EM radiation. So if you increase the intensity here, since the energy of each photon remains the same because you did not touch the frequency, the, fre the energy of each photon depends only on the frequency. You're using the same frequency but you increase the intensity, the energy of each photon remains the same, but intensity higher means the number of photons per unit time is higher. So you're actually supplying more photons. When you supply more photons, what happens is more electrons will come out. That's why remember, when you have higher intensity, your current is higher. Quite not. But why doesn't your electron come out with more energy? Because each uh, photon still contains the same amount of energy. So every electron that absorbs will still have the same maximum Ke. Right? Can you see that? And finally, the fourth observation, the maximum Ke is, uh, will increase what? with frequency of EM radiation because once you increase the frequency of EM radiation, the energy of each photon increases. So therefore, when the electrons absorb it, of course it has more energy to come out. So the maximum Ke increases. Alright, so this is how Einstein managed to explain photoelectric emission. So therefore, this uh, current, uh, not current, this intensity, uh, this formula for intensity is your third equation you got to remember. So don't be uh, confused. Uh, sometimes the I represents intensity. Sometimes the I represents current. So you must be careful uh, what the I represents. Okay, if for the photon, your I in, it represents intensity. Uh, but if for electron, the I represents current. Okay, so be careful about that. Okay, so the next diagram tells you why the electrons come up with different Ke. Right? Let's look at um, what happens here. If we look at the first electron here, okay, let's look at the first electron here. It is right at the surface right now, of the metal. So this is a photon. Once it absorbs, once the electron absorbs a photon, because it's at the surface, it has the 
it requires the least amount of work to escape, so it comes out with the highest K. Now, electron number two is so deep inside the metal, such that when it absorbs the photon, by the time it does work to try to escape, it has no more Ke, so it gets sucked back in. The third electron is slightly inside compared to number one, so it comes out with slightly less Ke. Number, electron number four is the, the sad case. Huh? It was at the surface, but it so happened to be travelling inwards when the time when it received the photon, so it went deeper. So it never come out. So therefore, you will notice uh, that not necessarily uh, every photon that has sufficient energy will cause one electron to come out. It also depends on where the electron is at and where uh, and which direction the electrons are moving. So probably the ratio is about 1 million to 1. If you're sending 1 million photons, for every 1 million photons, you probably only get one electron that comes out. Why? Because the electrons have to be at the right place at the right time moving in the right direction. Then only it comes out. It's like you striking a lottery. Okay? But because you're sending in so many photons, of course you have sufficient electrons coming out. Lah. You understand? Lah? You still have sufficient electrons coming out to detect. But one thing you must realize, not every photon can cause an electron to come out even though you have sufficient energy. Okay? That's what I'm trying to say. Lah. Right, so the next thing is Einstein came up with the equation for the photoelectric emission. They call it Einstein's photoelectric equation. So let's talk about his initial idea first. So his initial idea is conservation of energy. He says the energy of each photon will be absorbed by the electron and that becomes the work done to remove the electron from the surface of the metal and any balance becomes the Ke. Agree not? Agree? The abs electron absorbs the photon it does work to come out from the metal, any balance becomes a K. Now, but you must understand, because all the electrons have different, different Ke, because they are all different, different parts of the metal, so Einstein realized that he can find out one case accurately, which are the electrons at the surface of the metal. You know why? Because the electrons on the surface of the metal will have the highest Ke, right? Now. And remember, highest Ke you can calculate from the first equation, from the first slide, your Ke max equals to QVS, remember? Remember the QVS we did earlier on? So we actually can find the maximum Ke. So he um, modified the equation, this general equation, for this particular electrons at the surface of the metal. So he says, therefore, the energy of the incoming photon, which is your HF or HCO or lambda, is equals to the minimum work done to remove an electron from the surface of the metal. So that is called your work function energy. So this symbol here, work function, represents the minimum work done to remove an electron from the surface of a metal. So that is the definition of work function energy. Huh? So therefore, these electrons will have the highest Ke. So this is Einstein's photoelectric equation that you must memorize. Do you understand? Uh? And if you want to find out the formula for, tra uh, for this uh, work function energy, so let's talk about this. Uh. If you supply threshold frequency, there's a minimum frequency, then the electrons can come out but got no Ke. You understand? Uh? That's the minimum. So what will happen is your HF0, which is your H times your threshold frequency, will give you your work function but got no Ke. So you get work function is HF0. And you can modify a little bit more in terms of wavelength. Since V equals to F over lambda, so your lambda is V over F, right? Not? When you use the minimum frequency, you will end up with what? Maximum wavelength. Agree not? Because it's inversely proportional. Ma. So you will get work function is also equals to HC over lambda max. Also can. So there are two formulas for work function again. Okay, uh. alright, so this is Einstein's photoelectric equation, uh, this one. Uh, energy of photon equals to work function energy. So what's work function energy? Minimum work done to remove an electron from the surface of a metal. Then plus maximum K. Right, so the graphs. Now, the first graph that we learned um, earlier on was in the first slide, which was like this, right? Uh, current versus voltage, right? Uh. 
So that one we are done. Uh. So we're going to look at the second graph here, which is we are plotting actually Ke max. Uh. There's a Ke max versus frequency. So how do we get this graph? Very simple. If you take Einstein's photoelectric equation and rearrange the equation to make Ke max a subject, because this is my y axis. Uh. I make Ke max as my subject, I'll get Hf minus work function. Right? So since you're plotting Ke max versus F, so the Ke max is your y axis, your frequency is your x axis, what does the gradient give you? Threshold, uh, Planck constant. And what does your y intercept give you? Work function energy. Because you compare, the y intercept gives you negative of your work function. So therefore, you get this graph. Actually, starting from here, this one is you just extrapolate yourself. The graph actually starts from here. Okay, so you extrapolate yourself to get your work function. Uh. Alright, so this is the uh, graph that you need to know. Uh. Okay, so now let's summarize the entire part because uh, it's so confusing. There's so many equations, right? Uh. Okay, so let me summarize for you. For photons, uh, the first formula you need to know is the energy of each photon, which is E goes HF or E goes HC or lambda. So if, if they ask you to find energy of photon, you just have to use this. Second formula for photons is intensity. If they give you the intensity of EM radiation, you can use this formula, uh, which is energy per unit time per unit area. So the energy, total energy of the EM radiation is also number of photons times energy of each photon. So therefore, rearranging your number of photons per unit time is this formula. So you want to find number of photons, you use this. Third one, if they don't give you intensity, they give you power, so it's easier. So power is just energy per unit time. Always change the energy to number of photons times the energy of each photon. So number of photons per unit time is P over E also can. So you realize all this is about photons. For electrons, if they ask you, uh, I mean, the first e equation is actually Einstein's photoelectric equation. And the second equation is the formula for, tra uh, for this uh, work function. The third formula is for current. So this I here is current. This I here is intensity. Don't confuse. If they ask you, if they ask you to find number of electrons per unit time or number of electrons, you can use current here. So current is rate of flow of charge. Total charge is number of electrons times the charge of each electron. And the final equation is your maximum Ke is QBS. So... There are two graphs that you also need to know. The first graph is current versus voltage. So you'll be like this and like this. So this is your stopping potential. The second graph is your Ke max versus frequency is like this. So if you extrapolate, you will get your negative of your work function and the gradient will give you your... what. Plum constant. Two graphs. Okay, so this summarizes the entire part of photoelectric emission. So these uh, are uh, Einstein's uh, explanation of uh, the photoelectric emission won him his won him his only Nobel Prize. All right, because uh, uh, the other uh, the other ideas that he had, for example, you know the more famous uh, equations like E equals m c squared. You know why he didn't win a Nobel Prize? Because that equation is actually for what? Right? For nuclear bomb. <laughs> okay? He actually designed it because at that time, remember, Germany was, uh, was uh, actually like uh, exterminating the Jews because he's a Jew, right? So he went to US and helped them design the atom bomb to fight against the Germans. Right? So Nobel Prize is for peace, <laughs> not for killing people. <laughs> So even though it's a very good discovery, but he doesn't qualify for Nobel Peace Prize. Huh? Second one is more is another famous uh, idea was remember the theory of relativity. Alright, so theory of relativity was uh, was too uh, radical at that time, such that other scientists didn't believe him. So because of that, they didn't give him a Nobel Prize. Later on, when other scientists proved that this was correct, then they actually like realized that. Okay, he's correct, but they didn't give him any more. He died. I don't know whether he died or not. But I think they, they by the time he proved they proved his theory correct, I think he was still alive. Huh? 
But anyway, too bad lah. So he didn't win the Nobel Prize for even the other things lah. So we only won for photo electromission. The sad case is it wasn't his original idea. He even borrowed the idea from Max Planck, right? Lah. So conclusion is if you do everything yourself, you may not get anything. Better you just steal people's idea, you may get something. That's all for today's video. If you are interested in more genuine sharing by other geniuses, please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to turn on the notification bell, ding dong. Also, if you're struggling with one or two past your questions and the mark scheme just doesn't seem to help, Genius got you covered. Feel free to let us know what question it is by filling in the Google form linked in the description below. Genius Hub will get genius teachers to fulfill your request for the solution. Genie, we'll see you next time. Bye bye.